is a great opportunity to take the scavenger hunt everybody knows and loves and really bring it home. And that's what we've done. We've been taken an iPhone and an Android app. The users log in, see all the missions they have to complete, then submit a photo of themselves completing it and receive points. But what we've taken it a little bit further, and it's really our secret sauce, is our photo feed and our ranking feed. And that really drives everything that's special about Goose Chase. When you see everybody else submitting photos, and you see yourself climbing up the rankings, it gets competitive really, really quickly, and we see some pretty wild photos come in. For example, for an event we ran for Crackberry.com last year, we had thousands of people playing at once, and people were even shaving the Blackberry logo into the side of their head. As many of you will know, this is a marketer's dream to see that kind of engagement. And we see that pretty much every event we have. Our first event, we had seven teams playing, six of them got their backpacks for it. There was no price. There was no reason to go this far and win. People just really enjoy it and get competitive. And that's what drives Goose Chase forward. We've already run hundreds of events with our minimum viable product, including ones from Google, Rim, and Nike. And they all love it. And this lends itself to our business model, where we can run these games for conferences, for universities, for team building events, and especially brand activations. It's a very compelling value proposition when you can deliver this type of engagement. We're all an engineer, computer science, we've got the chops to pull it off, we're confident this is far from a wild goose chase. The other thing is, when you have pictures like that, and you integrate Twitter and Facebook sharing, people are going to see it and they're going to uh, notice that. Now we're not relying solely on the viral aspect because that's kind of a, it's, it's tough to bank on that. But we've run the numbers and the cost of customer acquisition for our paid events is definitely uh, lower than the lifetime value, so we can run it up through a little paid engine of growth there. Can you walk us through your pricing model uh, for brands and other uh, service providers? We've figured out what the rough um, transition from just a, an event and a barbecue on the weekend to what a, uh, a team building event. It seems to be around four or five teams is where it goes from just fun with your friends to an actual big event. And that's where we started. We have a pricing, uh, we have a freemium model where four teams and under. It's uh, free to participate. From four to about 20, we put around $2,500 for an event. And then above that, it gets a little bit more specific based on the number of participants. And to follow up, so if I'm a brand, I basically could run a number of these events across the country. I said basically pay you if you go beyond that to rank, right? Right, right. With any breaks you've done, like the pilots and so forth, uh, you get a price in the map where you can basically say, hey, I've got a budget of 25K, and let's go around this. I mean, how, how's that work? It's uh, a lot of the stuff we, we did early on, we go ball substantially just to get them on the platforms we have success stories. But we've already been talking with a number of brands uh, and when a big marketing campaign is around a million dollars, we can get in there for 50K, 75K, depending on the size, and it's really just another line item on there. So for the branding activations, you can really run, uh, it's just a percentage of it, but it's a, it's a good chunk of revenue that we can bring in there, and we can run many of them for that. Who's designing the actual scavenger hunt for the brands? Are, you, are they doing it? Are you doing it for them in, in conjunction? Um, you know, is it just sort of, I mean, it's above the freemium model where you get involved and everyone else is just kind of figure out you know, how to do this on their own? We've got a mission bank on there of a hundred and something missions that people can play or just click and go with. And we've tested them all, they work really, really well. We actually, most of the things we sell, we don't touch it. Other than that, it's just a platform where people can come on, click, 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 and then away they go. If there's somebody that wants to pay us extra to help them come up with awesome missions, we've done that in the past. It's not a scalable way of doing things, but to continue growing and continue learning, grow and do the time. But it will be for a more facilitation fee on top of that. And, and what's your, because I, I totally get the, you know, why brand would be into this and it's sort of a fun way to engage with the brand. Um, but the barrier here is then you're sort of asking the consumer to download this app just so they can engage with the brand. Is there a, is there sort of a lighter weight way to interact before you actually download the app um, so that you can have a cool blend? 
One of the things that we, we have on the roadmap going forward is having a landing page of all the best photos that are coming in before that type of event. So you can see all the crazy things that people are doing and then say, hey, I want to go and try that. So it's, it's more of a lightweight way of getting people familiar, getting them interested, without saying, okay, now download our app, log in, join the game, and there you go. Once the consumer that has been involved in one, two, three, four, five, five events, how do you think they will engage? Because I guess they become tired at one point. You need the space to mount uh, with a decent amount of time and interval between them. One of the things that we've realized is when you do games like this, it either needs to be very passive, like a force where you're checking in and you do it again, it takes a couple seconds to do. Or when it's something as engaging as this, you really just need to go for it, suck people in for a certain amount of time, and then bring them back in a couple months. So that's the type of way that we really need to run it when the people are participating. Um, but it could also be for brands, one of the things we've talked with the number of them about is making it uh, weekly challenges or monthly games <coughs> where different sets of people come on board. So it's still fresh content-wise, but we know that we're not going to get people doing these every single week, and we're comfortable with that. Can you walk us through the data that you're collecting, or that you're thinking of collecting, and how deep those analytics you provide back to the brands, you know, even on the individual list? Uh, that's one of the things that we're just rolling out now. Uh, we're bringing out our, our version 2.0 platform uh, this week, and it's very much focused around the analytics piece. So we went and talked to a number of brands, Figured out. We actually just asked them, what do you actually want to see? Um, marketing agencies especially, they have a list of metrics that you can bring back to the brand after an activation. And a lot of it is tracking the sharing data, which puts us in a really good position because we can track the Facebook and the API, just how many people that those photos have gone out to. And it gives them a lot more clear, tangible metrics than marking down something on how many flyers they gave away at an activation on the street. You just how long has it been in the app store just the other day? The first version went in the app store probably last summer, and that was our very middle product, just throw it out there. And then the one in the app store been there for five, six days, the new version that just uh, we just launched. Okay. And what uh how many downloads have you had? It's we haven't really been promoting it too too much. We've been in the game here. <laughs> yeah. But it's been around a hundred just kind of organic. But you, just so that I, I'm trying to get a sense of what you see as the driver of the usage. Is it, is it people who are, is it the brands and these other activities are pulling people into the app? Or do you see it as sort of a standalone consumer app that, you know, sort of gains its own momentum uh, just because friends are doing it, uh, you know, with themselves or families or whatever, uh, and then brands tap into that? Uh, up until now, it's been very spiky downloads. When we run an event, there'll be about a thousand downloads, and then there won't be a whole lot. And because there's no games running, there's not a lot of reason for people to download the app. And that's one of the things that we are working to change to get a little, a little bit more food. But we've had about 15,000 people use our original app, which was just a spike of a thousand here, and then a couple weeks later, a spike of 2,000 there, um, which is, it's good if you've got people using, but we want to do that a little bit more. And that's one of the things we're focusing on. So from the uh, 30,000 foot view, gamification, which is obviously exciting, social, obviously, and you built in monetization, so we see it's, you know, it's, it's solid from those aspects. If I walked in the room right now, I just looked up there and I saw Goose Chase scavenger hunt for the masses, it's even bigger than, you know, the model that you explained. So, you know, as you go forward, actually, scavenger hunts for the masses is what I would focus on. So I don't think they'll be stuck in just one area. I think potential room and expanding into other kind of scavenger hunts. A lot of things you can do with the brands. The underlying analytics and the data that you'll get will be obviously the most valuable aspect of it. So uh, just from that standpoint, don't mind me. I'm just here to give my two cents. Uh, but we're going to open up for questions, uh, Q&A uh, with regards to each other.